how good is it to be back? You're in stage two now, which, you know, unfortunately for some lads means contact in training. So Monday you go in, uh, there's these swab tests. What's that like? Is it as uncomfortable as it looks? Yeah, they're horrific. Honestly, like, they're, they're, they're some of the worst tests I've ever done, I think. I was fully gagging. I think I threw up in my mouth on Monday. <laughs> fully teared out. I'll tears rolling down the cheeks. So that's horrific. Um, and then, to be fair, I had a bit of a stink last week. My housemate, he, so we all got tested on Monday. Tuesday morning, I get a call at like 6.30 in the morning from the, from the doctor. And I, I missed it and then rolled over and saw the message. He's like, don't leave the house. And I was like, oh, God, here we go. George, how are you, buddy? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. You okay? Mate, I'm very good. I'm very good, thanks. All the better for talking to you. And I'm glad you've rocked up, actually, um, with the famous moustache, because I was wondering what I was going to see. So I'm so glad. That's no way I shaved off of this. So, uh, mate, we'll start, start on the moustache then, because a lot of my mates were like, have you seen this new 15 player for England? Some of them were like, hell of a tash. And some of them were like, taking the piss or not? <laughs> so, tell I get, us. I get, the, I get the same response every, every time. Like, it's, it's very mixed, mixed feelings. I feel, like, I feel like it goes down better with, with blokes than it does with females. Um, my, my, actually, my missus quite likes it, so... Uh, so that's all right. I went down well with her, and then yeah, it's just mixed emotions. Obviously, you get the, you get the classic. I mean, I'm not sure I'm allowed to say it. The, the like the classic <laughs> tash kind of chat, uh, <laughs> or, or or I get the fighter pilot chat. So mate, take, take take the fight, fighter pilot one, mate. In this day and age, for sure. How have the last kind of few weeks and months been? Keeping yourself in good shape. There was a a picture that went viral, as they say. I think it was you and your budget smugglers. You and a couple of mates. Pictures, yeah, yeah. We got forced to do that. Just to, you know, it I wasn't wasn't, it wasn't out of choice. <laughs> mate, you look good. If I look like that, mate, hey, four store. It, it, it was a free pair of budgies, so I was like, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's definitely worth it. Everyone that I've spoken to during this period, doing the interviews and that, we're talking about reflection, right? Because you, you have a lot of time to to think. You know, when you what, whatever scenario you're in, I think naturally we all had a moment of that. Just talk to me about the reflections that you've had uh, now that you're an England player. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's all kind of, I still kind of, it feels weird to me when, when people say that. Um, so kind of getting used to that is, is still quite surreal. But yeah, like you said, it all kind of, it's all happened very quickly. I, I kind of, I looked at uh, how many caps I got set. I think I've only got like 30, 30 something caps at Saints still. So I'm still kind of um, one of the young experienced guys there. Um, and so then, yeah, going into the whole England setup was was unexpected to start off with, um, and then playing, even being picked and picked in that France game and again was was another kind of unexpected unexpected event. So, um, no, I, like I've I, I've loved this this season as a whole, and especially the, the Six Nations kind of the cherry on top. Um, I kind of look back with with mixed emotions, and they're similar emotions that I had probably after the first couple of games as well of. Yeah, it was. I don't think I had as good a game as I could have, but it's um, it's something. Yeah, it's something I'd always wanted to do, and so being able to do that was um, was was pretty special. Yeah, absolutely. Let's just t talk a little bit about that game because, like, the conditions and stuff like that wouldn't have suited necessarily the way that you want to play. You're up against France, um, you know, and then you play that Scotland game as well. Was a player. And, and I know this from, a, from my point of view, one of the things I used to do with after the game is I go on social media, you're looking for people's interactions around you. Did you look at that after the game or anything like that? Yeah, I, I try not to read into stuff, to be honest. Like like you said, England is, you can, it, that was one thing I had to learn to deal with was now you're on like a, a properly big stage compared to compared to Northampton. Like Northampton, you kind of, it's it's sort of the local areas that, that will talk about games and things like that and, and your, your own fans that will talk about things. And you go to England and obviously it's kind of the whole country involved and massive, massive media sort of profile. So I had a, I had a general idea of what people were saying just from you get I mean you get mates telling you and all that kind of stuff so um so yeah I kind of had a general idea but um you're learning you just got to kind of learn to deal with it really haven't you so I think I think I was quite lucky that, that Scotland game was 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 a reasonably quick turnaround so I could kind of get my focus focus onto that rather than dwelling on on what happened in France but I, I still look back with with massive pride in the, in the France game because like it was my debut it was it was something that I wasn't expecting to happen and yeah I made I made a few errors but it was still just yeah it was still an unbelievable experience and and to say I'm a cat player now it's, it's, it still means a lot it's pretty special. Oh mate I can't even imagine mate as they say well not me as they say you know two caps for England is equivalent to 60 caps for Scotland so um, no I'm sure it was I don't say that and don't speak to Rory Hutchinson about that either so 
Um, but mate, no, look, congratulations. It was unbelievable to see you out there, especially in full flow with the moustache. Just talk to me about the, the conditions, right? Let's talk about that because you rock up and you're, and as a fullback, I can't even imagine what you're thinking. As, as a forward, you'd, you'd be thinking, all right, but it was one of the, the most difficult conditions for a game I've ever seen. How was it as a 15 trying to be under them balls? I, I think it was on, it was probably the worst conditions that I've, I've ever played. Like it was, it was a guessing game at times. As soon as the ball went up in the air, it was kind of a guessing game of where it was going to go. Because sort of driving there in the morning, I, I knew it was going to be wet. And like, I, like obviously, it's not a job playing in the wet as much as it is in the dry, but you can kind of deal with that. But then when it's when it's windy as well, and it wasn't just like straight down the pitch, it was sort of sort of swirling wind. And I was like, oh god, here we go. Um, but luckily, I, I wasn't tested too much in the end, um, which was which was quite nice. But yeah, it was horrific conditions. I think me and Johnny. Johnny May at the end were, was, was sort of getting the shivers. Uh, <laughs> not really involved. His ball was kind of picking and going for about 20 minutes to the end. Um, and so sort of getting the shivers towards the end. So it was, winning that game was uh, but kind of made it all worthwhile. I think if we'd, if we'd come off there with, with a loss, it would have been an even less enjoyable experience. You see a lot of guys, they go through the age grades. There's a kind of natural transition, especially with the backbone of that England team. They've, they've come, kind of come through the system yeah. together. Um, so it's not as much as a shock. And now I'm sure for your family and your parents, it must have just been whirlwind, right? So one thing, you play for Northampton a little bit. And next thing, you're lining up in Paris, one of the best places to play rugby in the world. How was it for them? Uh, I, I think they loved every minute to be honest. I think, well, I know they were extremely nervous. They were probably even more nervous than I was going <laughs> leading up to the game. Um, that I think they were all in floods of tears during the anthem, which which didn't surprise me. Uh, but I, yeah, I think they were yeah, they were they were loving every minute of it. Especially, especially Dad, he's he's a big rugby man, um, and so yeah, for, for them, yeah, I think they loved it. Like they got to come into the changing room and stuff after the France game as well, and. And, and watch me get my cap presented again, which was which was something that was was, was probably really special for them. So um, I kind of got glad I got to share that moment with them. I think I think they were glad once that France game was out of the way. I think they were a bit less nervous for the Scotland game. Um, but yeah, no, like I said, they, they they absolutely loved it. Yeah, I bet they did. And your interactions, I ask this to all the lads that are in the England squad because I find Eddie Jones such an inter interesting character, and I warm to him more and more that I hear about him. Spoke to Henry Slade about him. He actually messaged Slady, we're mates now, about his yeah. moustache, about his moustache and, yeah. and, and comments on it. What's, yeah, what's your interaction like with Eddie and how's he been with you? Um, I've not had too much interaction with Eddie since, since lockdown. More of it's been with, with Simon Amor, um, the bats coach. Um, but I, I, I found Eddie really good. To, he, was, he was very good to me, kind of leading it leading through the camp and then after, especially after that first game because so he called me in to to have a chat with me after the after the france game and i thought i was going to get an absolute bollock into it. i was absolutely crap my pants um and so but he called me in and and he sat me down i was just like look mate you just need to, to kind of get on with the basics and, and do the basics as well as you can it's in international rugby it's kind of all about doing those basics well and there'll be opportunities for you to to make a break or something and everyone will be will be talking you up so um he said to me look don't worry don't worry put that game and put that game to bed obviously learn from it um and he supported me again in the media i think um he said, there was a comment about he's not going to send me back to northampton to start making shoes again <laughs> um and so like that, that that was really nice and kind of gave me that gave me that little bit of a confidence boost again going into the scotland game so no he, he was uh he was good to me Right, let's just talk about this journey that I've, I've read about that I had no idea, and I'm sure the millions of people watching this uh, won't as well. So you started in the front row and just kind of go from there, really, because, as I said, it's not your kind of traditional um, pathway, I suppose, to, to test-level rugby for England. No, it wasn't. Yeah, well, I, I actually, I think I only played a couple of years in the front row because I had a bit of uh, bit of puppy fat when I was growing up. <laughs> Um, yeah, so there's, I think there's some pictures on my Instagram or something. So uh, I will dig them out. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they'll be dug out somewhere. Um, so yeah, st started off there and and very quickly moved into the backs. I don't think I really fancied fancied what they did, to be honest. I, I still look at it now and I like, thank God I did that. Um, uh, so yeah, started there and then quickly moved in, moved into the backs and played all my rugby sort of uh, age group level uh, hunting and rugby club. Um, I was at Kim Bolton School, and they didn't actually—they don't play rugby, so I never had any any school rugby to, to play. So it was always Sunday Sunday rugby for me. Like I, I got enough rugby 
playing on playing on Sundays, and I was always out in the garden with with my dad or whatever, or playing with mates and stuff. So uh, at that young age, I don't think I don't think rugby, is, especially at school, is is a necessity. You get you get enough. I mean, kids kids are always outside on the chucking the chucking the ball around and things. So um, no, nah, like. I actually really enjoyed as well the benefits of, of playing other sports at school. So I did, my main sports were hockey, football and cricket. So um, kind of got a wide variety of sports in there, which again, sort of tra- transfer across to, to rugby, which I could then play on a Sunday. So like I, I found that really useful. I really enjoyed playing all the other sports as well. Um, and so rugby was never sort of my sole focus really until I was like yeah again 16 17 and, and, and moved school and and sort of made my way up through the through the age group at saints there but seeing sort of seeing boys <clears throat> sorry seeing boys play like six england 16s 18s 20s and all that stuff was it kind of it does get to you a little bit at times because you're like i know this is uh this is a pathway to, to the main inning team and ultimately that's what you want to do so you sort of see that it was frustrating frustrating at times but i also kind of knew that um, once I got signed at Saints, I was like, okay, like they obviously see something in me, so um, I, I just got to keep keep my head down and keep working hard, and, and hopefully something happens from there. But let's just talk about any players that inspire you. Though. I'm quite interested to know, to know with you, young lads uh, who are playing professional sport and professional rugby in the kind of time that we're living in now. Any players that stand out that you think like he is the pinnacle in terms of your position? Um, I don't know too much about the fullbacks. I just know that. I wouldn't want to be going up for them high balls. It'd probably come from my head. But are there any players that stand out and you're like, yeah, that's the kind of benchmark of where I'd look, like to be as a fullback? Yeah, so obviously growing, sort of growing up, Northampton was my home club. So I, I looked up massively to, uh, to Fode, um as, as a player who I, I wanted to emulate. Um, and then kind of working with him was, was pretty surreal in my first couple of years there. Uh, so yeah, that, that was quite cool. And he was... He was helpful, and then sort of just the likes of the likes of Bowden Barrett and, and people now, the, the the best fullbacks in the world. Um, you, you, I think you just they're they're the people you look up to, and you kind of look at the skills that they've got and and how good they are on, on an international stage. Um, and you kind of I do my best to sort of sort of take bits and and stuff from from their games and and, and learn how I can do that better. Well, you know what? When Foden gets hold of this and you've put him in the same boat as Bowden Barrett, mate, he's going to be sharing the life out of it. Uh, <laughs> loving it. How good is it to be back? You're in stage two now, which, you know, unfortunately for some lads means contact in training. So Monday you go in, uh, there's these swab tests. What's that like? Is it as uncomfortable as it looks? Yeah, they're horrific. Honestly, like, they're, they're, they're some of the worst tests I've ever done, I think. I was fully gagging. I think I threw up in my mouth on Monday. <laughs> fully teared out. Like, tears rolling down the cheeks. So that's horrific. Um, and then, so we've had a bit of a stink last week. My housemate, he, so we all got tested on Monday. Tuesday morning, I get a call at like 6.30 in the morning from the, from the doctor. And I, I missed it and then rolled over and saw the message. She's like, don't leave the house. And I was like, oh, God, here we go. Um, so I called her back and she was like, yeah, your housemate has, uh, has come back with a positive test. Um, so I was like, oh, that means I'm back in isolation for 14 days. So I was, I was fuming at him to start off with. I was like, what are you doing? Um, uh, and then luckily he got retested and that and we got that back on third. So I had three days in isolation and it came back as a false positive. So um, I was yeah, I was kind of over the moon there. So I was Really? Like, so, so, yeah. so, so, so the plan is if, if someone gets um, tested and obviously gets tested positive yeah. then they look back, don't they? And they find out they're the closest people to them if they've had contact with them at training and then they're put into quarantine for two weeks if it then comes back positive again. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Well, it's it's it's, it's mainly housemates. They like, we do our best to kind of to kind of keep that social distance stuff on a Monday anyway. Um, so it was it was just because he was my housemate um, that that we would have had to go into isolation. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm delighted that I came back as a false positive on the Thursday. Kind of meant that yeah. yeah, and we'll be able to get back to it again again this week, which is nice. No, I couldn't even imagine. Um, not putting you on the spot, but a lot's been happening in, in rugby um, over lockdown uh, in terms of contracts, in terms of when the season's going to start. We can talk about the amount of games that are going to need to be crammed in. Have you got any opinion on anything that's happened? I know that Northampton have dealt with things really well from what I've heard, but there's obviously huge news this week uh, just up the road or across the road uh, in Leicester. Manu's now gone to sale. Uh, you know, he's took a bit of shit press from it in terms of calling him a rebel or whatever. From my point of view, I've, you know, I've got a lot of respect for Manu and I think, you know, you're in a tough position in terms of rugby um, 
credentials and everything that comes with that and you know how you need to be perceived in terms of money is what I'm trying to talk about there's a load going on so it's difficult any views on that yeah, I, 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 think, I think it was really tough to be honest because they 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 came up with this I, I don't know when it was like June the 15th or something it was a Wednesday where you would have to sign these contracts by and so obviously a load of lads are kind of getting contracts it felt like a transfer deadline day to be honest um, and so you kind of have like a well I think we had sort of a four or five day time to make a to make a decision that was going to last well it's, yeah keep me here for another four years um so they're, they're yeah by no means they're they're they're, they're small decisions so um and and having that that time pressure on it as well was that was pretty stressful times i think i ended up signing mine on like 10 o'clock on on, on that evening so yeah they i mean they were pretty pretty stressful times for, for for a lot of players i think um for those in contract and out of contract and then the pay cut side of things, I mean, we like like you said, we we've been really lucky at, at Saints. Like Mark Darwin's done a, re- a really good job, and we felt like we've been we've we've, we've had a good deal, and, and things have dealt with really well um, compared to what, what I mean. I don't know what's happened at other clubs exactly, but you'd hear stuff in the media, don't you? So um, yeah, we've uh, we felt like we've been really lucky, and and so it was it was sort of an easiest decision for for us to make kind of accepting those pay cuts i mean I, the, the stuff with manu i think is impossible to comment on at all to be honest because there's clearly there's clearly a, a backstory behind it other than him just not accepting pay cuts and then going no um because i mean I, i've seen a, a few of his brothers bar tweets and stuff like that so uh yes yeah, it's, it's, it's impossible to comment on that but say so they're gonna have a big old center partnership next year so that's gonna be a that's gonna be enjoyable to, enjoyable to deal with my, my word can you imagine i mean they, they look unbelievable so it'll be interesting to see when the pressure's on them now isn't it all the pressure's on them um the reason i'm looking down is i got a message from tom wood so Woody, obviously your t- teammate in Northampton, my old next door neighbour when I was English and lived in Coventry. Um, I won't tell you the first bit what they used to call you because I don't know whether that's usable on here. Uh, but he says, uh, currently he's got a Swedish missus, which obviously means your girlfriend, um, living she's with him. Dutch. You got that wrong, she's Dutch. <laughs> Details, eh? Details, oh. Swedish, Dutch, oh. I mean. Uh, but he said, ask him to tell the story of her first introduction to Colsey, who's Alex Cole, your flatmate. Um, just t- just tell us about that there. I don't know if he's opened you up here, but it, it seems quite funny. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I hope my missus doesn't actually watch this one now. <laughs> She's probably getting fed up with me and bringing this up. Um, so I, I did an Instagram, Instagram Live uh, interview. Uh, like, I think it was a week back. I think it was Colsey's first few days with, with Soph, and he was chatting to her and, and getting to know her a little bit. And I was I went upstairs and was went on the Instagram Live. Um, and there's there's a lot of chat at rugby clubs with the classic the classic lad chat of of oh you shouldn't have a girlfriend and like you're, you're 23 and that like, goes around to all the lads who have got girlfriends when they're young um, and and Colsey mentioned about not basically brought up that sort of chat and my missus was downstairs watching the Instagram live and obviously in the same <laughs> in the same house uh, just met each other just had a nice conversation downstairs and he wrote that so. It didn't go down too well, yeah. So he's so he's done that, and he's caught corona. So he's on strike two, and we're about two weeks into to him living with me. So he's not had the, not had the best start to uh, to moving in. Here. No, and the and the rest of the lads think your missus is Swedish, and she and not yeah, Dutch, exactly. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, she's because she's female. I mean, bless her, mate. Uh, but no, George, mate, thanks very much for that. Loved it, absolutely loved it. So good luck That's when the season so gets on. Yeah, no worries, and good luck with the season and. Uh, when the internationals get back up and running, hopefully you get a proper run in some dry conditions as well. Thanks, Ross. That'll be lovely. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers, George.